What's up everyone? Geek here. Today we're going to start something a little different. Uh, it's a series that I've been wanting to do and it's how to get started with home recording, whether it be making music, uh, recording vocals for the music, doing voiceovers for podcasts or anything like that. I'm going to tell you what all you need and show you how to do it with what I use. It's going to be a couple of different episodes, but on today's episode, it's going to be hardware. What hardware you need, um, no matter what it is, whether it be the mics or the interface or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need is uh, it's going to be a computer. It doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a desktop, but if you're using a laptop, I would recommend getting a pretty powerful one, not like a $150, $200 laptop. You might want to spend some money. Um, it can be Windows, Mac, Linux. There's software and everything available for all of those. Everything differs. I use Windows. Uh, it's just something I've used all of my life, so I've just kind of stuck with it. But the first thing that you're going to need is a USB audio interface. Now, what that is, is it's a USB device that plugs into your computer via USB and allows you to plug in your microphones and your your guitar, your bass, whatever it may be. I'm going to show you my old one here first, just so I can have it in my hand. And then I'll show you uh, the one that I'm currently using. My old one was the M-Audio M-Track Duo. What duo means is pretty, you know, self-explanatory. It has two mic channels. One can be used for your mic if you wanted it and another for an instrument. Or you could just swap it, you know, or you can have two mics or two instruments or whatever you may be. Now, this is Phantom Power. What Phantom Power is, it's four condenser mics. We'll get to the different mics here in a minute, but it sends 48 volts of power to the mic because that's what the mic needs to work, essentially. Uh, without that, the mic just won't work. Now, this is not a condenser mic. We'll get to what type it is later. Um, so I'm not running Phantom Power. But uh, on this one, it's also got a headphones port that you can plug in a pair of headphones and monitor the sound directly into your ears, latent free, no latency at all. Um, and then it's got like a few different, you can monitor it uh, mono. So it ends up just being uh, one channel or you can monitor it through stereo. What, what stereo does is the left mic here will be in your left ear uh, through your headphones, and then the right mic will be in your right ear. That's kind of nice uh, if you have multiple people talking at one time, or if you want to pan your guitars and hear what they're going to sound like. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see on the back, it's got a USB port that's USB-B. So that's like the, the cable that comes with the printer. So if you ever have issues with the cable shorting out, you just buy another USB-B cable and you're good to go. And then you can hook up some live studio monitors or what I'm using is a quarter inch. Uh, it ends up being a 3.5 to dual quarter inch and that can be used as an input or an output. And what I'm using that for is uh, to hook up my computer speakers to the back of this. So that's pretty handy. They're all pretty much the same. Um, they've all just got a little different quirks. You can buy uh, interfaces with a single channel and you can buy them up to, I think there's an 18 channel. Well, you can actually use a, a PA mixer sometimes as an interface. There's a lot of work that you have to do to get that to work correctly. But um, you can buy eight channels as well, which is good for recording like live drums and stuff like that. Um, but let's go ahead and I will show you the one that I'm currently using. So let's flip the camera around and I'll show you. Okay, so this is the one that I am using. It is the Behringer Euphoria UMC 404 HD. Yes, that's the name of it. Um, it's a four channel. What I have here is you can see the different inputs. Uh, this is the mic that I'm currently talking in and you can see the signal light up every time I talk. So hello everyone, see that? Uh, this is another mic just like this one because I have a podcast that I run. Um, so it's over here beside me to my right. This is the mic that Cheyenne, my vocalist of O Nightingale, um, uses. And it's like 10 feet over there beside me. So that's a really long cable running to it. And this one is empty because I always use it for my instrument input. Now what these little guys are, they're pretty handy. When you have multiple mics connected to your interface, 
you just buy these little green, red, blue, yellow, whatever color you want, Velcro straps, strap one to the cable that's plugged in here and the one that's plugged into your mic and it helps you uh, identify which one you're plugging up because it can get confusing. Um, but then you move over here, you've got the volume knob and uh, a, a few little settings here that you can do. I'm not doing reviews on the interface, I'm just kind of telling you what it is. Um, if you press the button in, it becomes an instrument. If you leave it open, so poked out, it becomes a microphone. And then this kind of mutes the mic. It's like a, a 30 decibel drop in the volume of the mic, so I'm not gonna press that. Um, well, I could do this. Uh, 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 uh. See the difference there? And that's the same, that's the same, that's the same, but it's just for the, you know, the separate channels there. Uh, this is a main out uh, volume control. This one here, sorry. This controls the volume to my speakers, which is my computer speakers connected to my computer. This is pretty cool. This, if I turn it all the way down, I only hear my microphone. But if I turn it all the way up, I hear nothing but the computer sound that comes through this. So I can adjust the amount of mic and music or whatever else if I'm playing a video game on my computer I can adjust the the amount of game or chat essentially it's kind of neat um, and then this is another headphones port the exact same as on the other one um, so yeah that is basically it on the interfaces they're all the same essentially there are different brands. There are a different number of inputs that you can get. Just buy it accordingly. You know, there are some pretty cheap ones out there that really don't work that well, especially if you're using a guitar. Their preamp is not that good, and I would not buy those. Uh, this one was about $200 USD. I think I got it for around $150. Um, and then the other one, the first one I showed you, was like $60, and that's USD. Uh, the solo version of it, so the one the one input version of the old, the old one I have was like forty dollars, so they're really not bad. They can get pretty expensive. They can get up to like end of the a thousand fifteen hundred dollar range, um, but I didn't I I didn't care to get that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is this little guy. This is coming out of the main output on the back, which is what runs to the sound that I hear splits it four ways and then you can control the volume through four different sets of headphones or as I have it three different sets of headphones and my computer speakers pretty neat it's not necessary it's just uh, sometimes I have multiple people sitting around me that have uh, headphones on and we all need their our own you know individual control this one's the headphones I'm wearing now this one is the one that's for my secondary mic so it's essentially kind of like this for my secondary mic uh, for the podcast. This is the the mic that Cheyenne uses and the headphones that she wears way over there, like 10 feet away. She gets her own volume control. And this just this one is my uh, computer speakers. So I, I just get some good control over the volume. Everybody can adjust it to how they want because everybody's hearing is different. So everybody wants different volume levels. So the next thing we're going to talk about are microphones. And there are typically two different types of microphones. You've got dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones are used for podcasts, voiceovers, live stage performances like miking the guitar amps and the bass amps, and then also the singer will use a dynamic mic. The reason for that is a dynamic mic has good sound rejection from stuff that's happening around the microphone, not in front of the microphone, but around it. Example, so if I keep talking and I move my voice around the microphone, you can hear that it gets quieter until I get back to the tip of it. Same on this side here and above it and below it. And that's just a good application for, you know, if you've got things happening around you that you want to be rejected. And they're also better for untreated rooms, which means rooms that have a lot of echo stuff like that. Usually a, a studio is going to have treatment on the walls, which I have here. And I also have carpeted flooring in this room. So it's really good. So this is actually the Zoom ZDM1 mic. It has nothing to do with like Zoom calls or anything like that. Um, but this is a really good mic. It was about 170. I bought it at Best Buy. Well, I bought two of them. 
Um, and then another good dynamic mic. And, and while I show you this one, I'm going to show you how to connect the mic. So this is the Shure SM58. This is a very, very well-known mic, especially in the music world, or just the world in general. Um, this is a, another dynamic mic. The rejection in this mic, like the, you know, the sides, like I was explaining, is incredible. If you've watched the video of me and Cheyenne singing uh, our new song, Stand Still, um, we originally were going to use this mic. It just doesn't look as pretty for a video. And this one looks really good. It looks kind of fancy. Uh, this one is, it's j it's really made for stage performances. But I was sitting uh, originally before we actually finished the video, I was sitting right beside Cheyenne playing the acoustic and she was singing with this mic and it did not pick up the acoustic at all, which was amazing to me. Um, so that was really awesome. So this is that that's why this is such a power horse in, in the music industry. But to connect a mic and they're all mostly like this. So you've got XLR mics and then USB mics. I don't recommend USB mics if you're going to do studio recordings because there's not many ways to get like real time monitoring. So hearing yourself talk, which is kind of nice because you don't have to feel like you're screaming. <laughs> um, but to connect it, you've got the bottom here and this camera does not focus for crap, but you've got the bottom here. This is known as an XLR port. And then you've got an XLR cable, which looks like that. And then you just kind of take it and you click it in place. And to remove it, you squeeze this little pin here and then pull. It's kind of nice. And on the other side where it plugs into the interface, it just kind of pushes in and then it, it pulls out just as easy. But I'm going to show you what this mic sounds like. So give me just a second. Okay, so now I'm using the Shure SM58. This mic sounds incredible. It has always been one of my favorite microphones. But if you notice, it doesn't have a windscreen on top of it so my p's and my b's and my t's and my s's are very what's called plosive into this mic so anytime air hits this mic it just it's really boomy and it's very annoying in recordings that people are listening to that's why microphones like this one have the windscreen or if you're recording with a um, like a, a nice condenser mic it's got those big round pop filters it looks like a piece of mesh uh, on a plastic circle. Those are called pop filters and those prevent plosives from hitting the mic, which is when air hits the mic, it then hits, it then hits, which this just screws right off by the way, it then hits the capsule of the mic, which is under that little piece of foam there. And I'm not going to remove that because that may damage the mic, but then you just screw it back on but that's what a plosive is when breath from your mouth hits the microphone and hits the capsule of the mic and goes boom now let's move back to the other mic here so okay so i'm back on this mic on the zoom zdm1 love this mic by the way um the next thing i'm going to talk about is a condenser mic now what a condenser mic is is a mic that looks like this and you may have seen them before this little contraption here is called a shock mount and what that does is it prevents bumps like this from sounding through the mic well it doesn't prevent it it just lessens the chance of it being heard and then what i have on here that's not normally on here it straps onto the mic with a little uh, I guess that's a rubber band and it so it's a, a pop filter a small pop filter that just goes on the front of it you know what let me demonstrate it I'm gonna swap over to this mic okay so I've got the mic hooked up I'm not, I don't have it on a stand or anything but I'm gonna show you I actually have the volume all the way up on this mic and is from this mic right here. Um, so I'm going to flip on phantom power. Do you remember me telling you about that? And this mic will magically work. So hopefully I don't blow your ears out. Give me just a second. Test. Te oh, 
it's so loud. Hold on, let me turn it down. Test, 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 test. Testing one, two, test, 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 test. Okay, so this mic here, the volume, is it, I would say, 60%? And this, I had to turn it down from 60% to like 40 so it's definitely different. Oh, and a good example is you can see the capsule. Because you can see it through the little mesh. Well, that's not really mesh, but you can see it through the little screen. Now, this is the MXL770. You hear how good this mic sounds? And a really cool thing about microphones is the closer you get, the proximity effect takes effect. <laughs> oh, gosh. This mic is so sensitive. So... Yeah, this mic is really good. So it's got a pop filter on it. So P and B and S and T. And yeah, so those are really nice. Now, these microphones are not good at rejecting uh, sounds beside them, behind them, whatever it may be. So test, 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 test. If I keep talking, you can hear the rejection is pretty good at 90 degrees. So even on this side here. But once you move around to the back it oddly starts picking up again. Oh, you hear that? Oh, that's not healthy. Um, so that's proof that you don't want to use these when you're trying to record voiceovers or anything. Sorry, I keep staring at myself in the viewfinder here. Um, they sound incredible. They sound really, really good. But they are not the best for doing voiceovers people use them for voiceovers though they just have a really really well treated room and if you listen you can hear the fans of my computer which is right there matter of fact watch this so snap so yeah it definitely picks up behind it, so like 180 degrees, it starts picking up again, which is very strange. They sound incredible. So you don't want to use these for live recordings or voiceovers unless you have a really, really good um, uh, treated room. You know, the echo is very minimal. Um, we use this in this room for the vocals on the O Nightingale track, so everything sounds really good and I'm really happy with this mic so let's go back to this other mic now so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is something that you may or may not want now if you're like me and you live in a house but you've got roommates you typically don't want to be loud so no recording like live drums um, and no recording guitars and bass and stuff like that unless it's just directly into your headphones um, it's also if you're in an apartment you know, you can't play, you can't be loud or anything like that. So this is something that's really good to have for when you're in those situations. And I'll show you. Okay, so this is a MIDI keyboard. What it is, is a keyboard that plugs into your computer through USB. And it does not play sound live. It has to be read into your DAW, your digital audio workstation, which we'll get to those in a later episode. Um, it has to be ran into your DAW and then you choose the effect that you want the keyboard to play. And then when you hit the keys, it makes that sound. I personally record all of my drums using the MIDI keyboard because I'm a drummer as well. So I know how to play drums and stuff. You just got to find where the sounds are on all the keys and stuff like that. And it, it takes practice because you're basically playing the drums like this. So it's, it's definitely interesting to learn how to do. And the same as a regular piano, you can plug in a sustain pedal, which I've got the, this is MIDI Plus brand. Can you see it there? Yeah, so on the corner there under the C1 right here, MIDI Plus, that's the brand. Um, I bought the, the cheaper, I bought the cheaper MIDI Plus sustain pedal. Uh, when you press it, it kind of, it's kind of clicky, a little bit annoying but it works just the same um, and then the click doesn't show up in your in your recording so it's really nothing to worry about but that is a great way to play drums or keyboard or any you can even play guitar sounds on this crap sounds a little fake but 
it, it's a great way to play instruments when you don't want to be loud. So the next thing I want to talk about is headphones. Headphones are super important in home recordings, especially if you don't want to be loud. Uh, you can hear everything in your headphones and you won't bug anyone. So one tip I'm going to give is if you are recording vocals, you want to use what's called closed back headphones. Now what those do, they do not let the sound from the headphones bleed out into the mic and into the recording and mess up the recording. So what they do is they, they make a seal around your ears and they cut off any chance of the sound coming out, just like noise canceling Bluetooth headphones. All Bluetooth headphones are closed back headphones. That's the only way you can achieve true noise canceling is to seal off around your ears. And that's why noise canceling headphones are typically over ear, unless you're using like fancy earbuds or something like that. But you do not want to edit your mix with closed back headphones because if you've ever noticed when you wear noise canceling headphones, closed back headphones, for long periods of time, your ears get hot and sweaty. Therefore, the sound does not have room to breathe, just like your ears don't have room to breathe because they're sealed off. And it makes it hard to edit because the sound is just kind of trapped here and has nowhere to go. So therefore, the EQing process can be thrown off by wearing closed back headphones. With that being said, I highly recommend getting a pair of open back headphones. I personally don't own any. I have used them though, but they can be really expensive. Me personally, I just edit using live speakers, so my computer speakers. Um, what open back headphones are good for is editing the music because they let everything breathe. They create a really wide sound stage. The sound is just incredible. Um, the only downfall to those is they let the sound bleed out. So if you're recording vocals, with a pair of open back headphones, it's gonna bleed straight into the mic. And also, if somebody is sitting in the room with you while you have the, the volume cranked up, they're hearing everything you hear. So therefore, so will the mic. So choosing headphones, you really need to know what kind you need and what you're trying to do before just making a purchase. And also, don't buy super cheap headphones. I know there's a budget for everyone these were like 60 70 bucks on amazon and they're called like onidos they're some weird brand that i never even heard of but they are incredible and they are closed back and there's no sound bleed into the mics when uh cheyenne is recording vocals so i'm super impressed with them i do want to invest into a pair of open back headphones eventually so i don't have to edit my music only when the roommates aren't here with that being said, this brings episode one to a close. Um, hopefully everything made sense. I, I know it, I just kind of rambled. And if you don't know tech specs, I probably didn't make any sense to you. Um, but let me know in the comments uh, if there is any other questions that you have. Subscribe if you want to watch episode two when I release it, which is going to be talking about the software side of stuff. So... Go ahead and hit like for me and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will catch you guys in episode two. Zombie Geek out.